Kal Kadosh, Boker Or Mesechet Babakama, the Flamid of Aleph 30A1, says the Mishnah. We're going to start the Mishnah. Shofech Maim Birshut Arabim. If somebody is going to come and they're going to spill water in the Rishut Arabim, Veuzak Bahen Acher, and somebody else comes and they get damaged. Yeah, they slip, right? It doesn't have to be Dav Kamaim, it could be coffee, it could be whatever it is, right? But what happens is somebody gets damaged. Right? And what happens is, Chayab Benisko. is Chayab in the Nezek. Beforehand was a very beautiful uh, thing. Oh, now he's Chayab in the Nezek. So he says, Amatsniya et Akots. He comes and he says, If somebody is going to be Matsniya et Akots, which means that he comes and he hides thorns or pieces of glass in the Rishut Rabin. Or he comes and he makes a Gader. Meaning his fence is thorns. Right, the gader should have to be or right, even a regular fence which is made out of um, stones that falls into the Rishut Rabim. In all these cases, those kuba and acharim and it damages other people's right. Chayav ben Iskan, a person is going to be chayav in the nezer. Okay, makes sense. Huh? Says the Gemara, Amar Rav, Rav comes and he says, Lo shanu ela denitatfu, right? Kelav. What are we talking about in the case where a person spilled water under the shooter beam and all of a sudden now he's going to be chayav? We're talking about where the clothing got dirty with the water. Aval hu atzmo, but the person himself, if he if he's falls or whatever it is, patur. The guy's going to be patur. Why is the guy going to be patur? Shekarka olam izikato. Because the karka olam was what damaged him, which means he got damaged from the floor, not by the water, right? And therefore, in such a scenario, right? Yeah. So he's going to be patur. Okay, so that's what we say. So it says the Gemara, misavrat, right? He says, Amar le Ravuna le Rav lo yehe ela kerif shol. Says one second. Even if you're going to tell me now that this karka which damages, but it's like the the refesh, which is basically water. When it gets mixed up with uh, afar, with dirt, what happens to it? It becomes like mud. So therefore, he comes and he says, since he didn't make ma- efker, his water, so then it would like became mud. So therefore, if so, it's like you're throwing fertilizer in the Rishut Rabim and you didn't make it hefker. So the person gets damaged. For sure, he's going to be chayav. So why do we say over here by us that you're not going to be chayav? So answers the Gemara, Nisavrat delotam umaya. He says, do you think that we're talking about the, the words of the Monaim? He's talking about a case where the water is not finish <clears throat> and the waters are still covered in the ground. He says, the tamumaya, there's no more water anymore, which means, right, that the water was absorbed in the ground and therefore right now there's no uh, mud. Okay, so therefore it's basically just the ground. So the ground got, got a person damaged. So says the Gimara, so fine. Okay, now you answer that. Why do I need two cases? Tarte Lamali. Do you realize, right? He comes and he says, why do we need two different Mishnayot to teach you the same halakha, that if you pour water in the Rishut Rabin, right, that you're going to be chayav on the dirtying of the clothing. We already learned this. Exactly. Right? He says, Nishbira Kadu Bishut Rabin. And somebody got uh, damaged, right? He's going to be chayav. And they're also talking about, you weren't mafkid the water. And you're going to be chayav on what? On the dirtying of the clothing. Okay? There says 28B or 28A? Well, uh, okay, fine. Yeah, this here it says A. Okay, so answers the Gemara. You know why you needed the two different cases? One Mishnah is talking about during the summer, because during the summer, right, there's Nisur to throw water into the Rishut Arabim. Why? Because basically, since the, the, the streets are dry, you're not allowed to get them dirty. So therefore, if it's a clean street, what are you throwing things in the street? But the other Mishnah is talking about Mota Geshamim. During the time of rain, anyway, the streets are all dirty. It's like the winter time. I don't know if you've been, right? And all these, since there's snow, there's days. So the, the streets themselves are dirty. So if you're going to come, you're going to start pouring water in the street. You didn't do anything, right? It's not, there's no, there's no effect, right? So anything that you're doing over here, okay? The Tanya, as we learned in Ablaita, Kolelu Shamu, Right, everything that we said about the hezeks and the Rishut Rabin, the right that potkimi go to hand, we go to female go to hand, that they're allowed to come and start opening up the sewages, right? Or they're allowed to come and start taking from the zevel, the fertilizer, and to throw it in the Rishut Rabin, 
right? Chachamim says, we don't have the permission to do so. We don't have the permission to do so. Now, even though they do have the permission to do so, if they damage, you're going to be chayat. Which means here is something very, very interesting. I cannot just come and start throwing my garbage into the Rashut Rabin, right? It doesn't exist. But, right, it does exist that you're allowed to do it during the wintertime, because anyway, the streets are already dirty. But if I do do it during the winter time, even though I have permission to do so, if it damages, I'm chayav. Okay, that's what we just said until now. Make sense? Yeah, fine. Two dots. The Mishnah said if somebody is going to come and hide the kots, right? What does it mean, the kots? He comes and he's going to hide, right, the thorns. So he says, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, says Rabbi Yochanan, Lo shanu ela What are we talking about? We're talking about where he put the kotzin to go all over the place in the Rishut Rabin. Aval mitzamsem lo, but if you brought them in to one place, then no, which means that this, when you just some came and all the kotzin, all the thorns are all over the place, imagine you go on a harding and you take nails, and you just like throw it around, right? You know how many tires are going to come back to you with the nails on the tires? It's not like you know how many people are going to come, they're going to come with nails in there. Uh, that, that's, so there you're going to be chayav, obviously. But in a case where you're mitzamtsem, which means that you're taking all the kotzim and you're putting them inside of your pr- uh, property, so you're not going to be chayav. My tama what's reasoning? My tama patur. It's not normal for people to start scratching themselves on the walls. Yeah, more than I heard. It's not normal. Sometimes you need to scratch on the wall. Fine. No, it's, it's uh, funny, yeah, it's yeah. Ah, yeah? No, because we were, we were just uh, laughing about that yesterday. We said that the reason why he's doing that is because we didn't buy him the... We're going to have to invest. You know, here we have for the shoehorns, you know, like very, very long ones. So for the Kuanin, they don't even have to bend down. It's like, pashut, they just put the huge shoehorn and then they put their shoe in it, right? It's called putting your foot in it, right? As they say. But uh, here, right, we have to buy him the... You know, the, the, the long, the you know, the, the, the brush with the, with the handle or whatever brush. it is. It's, yeah, yeah, it's not a brush. It's like a thing, exactly like that. And it's going to scratch his back. Yeah, yeah, yeah long one. Long one. Yeah, we'll probably have to get it. Yeah, yeah no, so we're going to have to get more the high. Uh, we're going to have to get more the high. That's why he's always scratching his wall against uh, his back against his wall. This is the Bukon 99 store. Yeah. All the 99 store have it. Ah, yeah? Ah, they have a cold kiss. 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 עוד אחד ביממה. מה שצריך לבית הכנסת. אנחנו צריכים עוד חמש סט. אז תביא חמש סט. אוקיי. מצוין. כמה עולה סט? נקסט. So therefore, since we see that it's not normal for people to come and start scratching their, their backs, right, on the key, on the kotel, so therefore that's why we say that it's going to be chaya. תנו רבנה, מנוי תנו רבנה איתה, מצניעה קוצותה וזכותה לתוך הכותל של החברו. Imagine I come and I put my thorns and I put my, my glass, right, inside the kotel of my friend. Right, he comes, right, and he's going to satar et kotlo. So what happens is this? The guy comes and he breaks his wall and now everything falls into the shooter beam. Iziko, right, if it damages, right, iziku, chayav ha-matzniya, the one that put it, Meaning, even though I came, I was the one that came and I broke the wall, and by automatically breaking the wall, right, everything came out, I'm not the one that's chayav. The one that put it into my property, into my wall, he's the one that's obligated. Not the owner's knowledge. Exactly, not the owner. I'm Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan says, Lo shanu, what are we dealing with? Ela bekotel ruwa. We're talking about a bad wall. Right? Why? Because the guy should have paid attention. If I have a bad wall, I'm going to probably knock it down and put up a good wall. But he says, bekotel bari. But in a good wall, Hamatsnia is going to be patur, we chayab balakote. The balakote is going to be chayab. Right? Why? Because basically, why in the world would I ever thought that you're going to knock down your wall? So for when I put it in your wall, it was keilun already knowing that nothing was going to happen. Okay? So says the Gemara, Ama Ravina, Zotomeret says Ravina, that's what it means. Ham chase bor bedalyo shil chavero. If somebody's going to come and he's going to cover 
a, put, a pit. Remember, we're talking about bor, right? if I'm going to cover a pit with the kisui, of the, the bor bedalio, which means the kisui bor of my friend, and then he's going to come and take the cover. Chayav al So the bala bor is going to be, be chayav. Why? So says the Gimana, Shita, obviously, right? You should learn that. So says the Gimana, no. Meaning like this. What happened exactly? I came and I covered my pit, right? With the kisui of my friend. My friend's pit's cover. He took it without permission. He comes, he takes it back. And he comes and he takes it back. So obviously, chayav al abor. So says the Gimana, Shita, obviously. So he says, no. I would have thought, say, hatam. The law had right. He didn't know how to tell him, right? So therefore, right? Well, he has to come and start telling every single person, "I want to break down my wall and build up a new wall." But over here, the other he does know about the case. He should have told him, right? He should have told him. So the mm-hmm. Mashmanan comes to teach you that that's not the reason why, but rather he doesn't even have to tell him. He doesn't have to tell him. I have to tell him that I'm taking back my property. So you're tough luck. I don't have to tell him anything. So that's why. That means I had a havamina that you have to tell him, right? The case of the wall, right? I'm going to have to start coming and start telling everybody, by the way, you know, anybody has things on my wall, they have to take it off. Uh, you don't have to say anything. But here in this case, I know that I took your pits, your cover for the pit. You just come and you took it. You should have told me. No, you don't have to. That's what we're saying. You need to put the sign. Well, obviously, you're not allowed to have the pit in the sugar bean. So the pits in the sugar bean, the damage is you're going to be chayav. Yeah? Tanu Rabbanan. We learned in a Braita. Chasidim adishonim. You must name it, kotzotem, kotzotem, betoch sadotem. They used to put it within their own field. Mamikim laem shoshat tvachim. They used to put it also three tvachim deep in order shelo yakeva macharisha. So it doesn't stop the plows. Meaning the plow used to come and, and used to, uh, how do you call this, like turn over Right, he used to come and turn over, right? The um, how do you call this? The plow? What are you talking about? They, they put him down deep so the plow wouldn't reach him. Exactly. Okay. So why? Because the, the, we used to turn over the fertilizer within the first three tvachi. Now Shashat Shadu Libuna. Shashat used to throw it in the fire. Rabba comes and he says, Shadu Lehu Bidiglat. He used to put it in the Nar Hidekel, right? Which is basically in the Hidekel River. Right? He used to throw them in the river. Right? And the other one used to put them in the fire. Because by putting it in the fire, it's going to get destroyed. The Gemara. So Amr of Yudah, Rav Yudah comes and says, this is a very, very famous Gemara, by the way. Hayman de bay le meve chasidah. If somebody wants to be a chasid, le kayem meli de nizikin. He should be le kayem mesecha nizikin. Right? There's a whole question, why? Now, what does that mean, uh, he wants to be a chasid? Right? That there should be pashub shat. Right? There's the room, mesecha nizikin is baba kama mumusia baba batra. Those are all like, all is called nizikin. The first okay? rule is do no harm. Exactly. Number two, Rava comes, he says, Mil Davot. What does that mean? Mesecha Davot. Musar. Derecheret. Pirke Avot. Right? Ethics of the Father. The Amila, and some people say, Mil de Brachot. Right? Mesecha Brachot. Right? Because they're also, we're talking about also a lot of things of Hasidut and other things like that. So therefore, it's very, very important. That means if somebody wants to be a Hasid, he has to pay attention. Number one, don't do harm to other people. Right? Number two, right? Ethics of the Father, which is basically Musar and Derecheret. And number three, Mil de Brachot. Concepts of Mesecha Brachot, which also has to do with also, the recherets and chisidut and, and uh, things like that. Fine. It says a Mishnah on the bottom of Mesechet, right? Baba Kama Daf Lamed Amud Aleph on the bottom. It says a Mishnah, Motsiyati, No, Ve Kashol, Rishut Arbim Mizvalim. If you're going to take out your Tevin and Kash, your straws and all these things, so the Rishut Arbim public to me, in order to make it as Zevel, fertilizer, right? Ve Uzak Bahen, Acher, and somebody gets damaged, Chayav Benisko, you're going to be Chayav in the desert. Ve Chol HaKodam Bahen, Zacha. And anybody that's going to be kodem uh, bahen is going to be zochem, which means anybody that takes it, they're allowed to take it. Shimon Gamaliel says, That's what happens, anything that happens in the Shut Rabin. If you're going to come and you're going to put things, which is going to be a takala, stumbling block in the public domain, and it damages, you are going to be hayav. And if somebody takes it, there's zochem. Anybody that comes with it, there's zochem. So it's okay? Yeah. You I put it in the Rosh Hashanah. Okay. If it's uh, FK? No, but that's what we're saying over here. Mitzad Echad, you're going to be Chayav if it damages. But Mitzad Shari, if somebody actually comes and they actually take it, right, they're going to be taking from like, it's considered like FK, which means that you're allowed to actually come and uh, take it, right? There's no problem with the doing it. The Gemara is actually going to explain, right, what, what you know, why is it like that? It's like a contradiction type yeah. of thing, right? But basically, it's like a knas, okay? Fine. 
if you look at the footnote, I don't know by you, but by me, it's footnote number 34. I don't know if it's in English what number it is. That if you take it and you're causing it, there's a knas, right? It's a knas of the of the rabbis. The, the rabbis give like a penalty that you're going to be chayav, even though you are mafkidet zeh, but that's why if everybody comes and takes it, they're going to be zocher, but technically speaking, it's like a penalty, a fine that they give you. Okay? Fine. Ne, the last case of the Mishnah, if you're going to come and turn over the fertilizer of the animals in the Shut Arbim, and it damages, you're also going to be Chayav Benisko. Says the Gimara, I want to say that our Mishnah is not like Rabiuda. During the time when you're going to take out the Zevil, the fertilizer, you're allowed to take it out, and you can actually leave it there for 30 days. In order that it should be trampled upon by the human beings, by animals and by human beings. That's what Yoshua did. Meaning, Yoshua bin Nun, he came and he put that in Eretz Yisrael they're allowed to do this in order that it should actually get, remember, to become fertilizer, they have to come, they trample upon it, and after so many people, said, now you can bring it in, now it's good fertilizer. So, but that's the way you make the fertilizer, right? So you have to trample upon it. So therefore, you were allowed to take it out. You leave it out in the Rishut Arbim for 30 days. During those 30 days, everybody's trampling upon it, whether it's human beings, animals, everything. And then afterwards, you're allowed to come and you bring it inside of your property. Okay? So says the Gimna, Afilu Teima, Rabbi Yuda, even you're going to tell me this is Shittat Rabbi Yuda, Mother Rabbi Yuda, Shemi Zik, Shalim Ashri Zik, Shemi Zik, you're going to tell me it's Rabbi Yuda, that you're allowed to take it out into the Rishut Arbim. If it damages, you're Chayav. Okay, fine, you're allowed to take it out. You're still going to be Chayav. Okay? So says the Gemara of Atnan, Rabbi Yudah Omer, Rabbi Yudah comes and he says, Benel Chanukah, Patur Mitne Shud Rishut. By Nel Chanukah, you're going to be Patur because you had the permission to do so. Mm-hmm. My love. Mm-hmm. Ah, exactly. I'm talking about, uh, it's coming up, Chanukah, yeah? So he says, mm-hmm. my love, this is Shabbat stuff. Remember, Shabbat, and it's uh, the next week, right, within the Shabbat. Thursday. Right? Yeah. So he says, my love, Mishum Rishut Betu. Right? No, but I'm saying this is Shabbat stuff. Mm-hmm. Meaning this is Shabbat Tav, and it's in the week, yeah. right of Hanukkah. So he comes and he says, when we're talking about now, Hanukkah, it's going to be patul because you did it with permission. What does that mean? When you have permission to do something, you don't, you're not allowed to get in the message. So so to here. Right? My love, Mishum Rishut Betin, is it not because of the Rishut Betin, which means that the rabbis came and they permitted you to do so? So if, if so, you should be patul. Why are you going to be chayat? It's a stira. It's a, it's a stira. Right? We already learned that if you're going to come and you're going to take, let's say, your... Um, you remember the animal and it's going by and then you have a Hanukkah outside mm-hmm. and, it, and it lights it up and so on and so forth. Since you have a mitzvah to do it because it, you're patur. So, so to hear, if, you do, if, you have a, if it's a mitzvah, so it should be patur. So answers the Gemara. He says, no, mishum reshut shal mitzvah. There, it's because it was a mitzvah that you're doing it. That's why you're going to be patur. Here, it's not a mitzvah. You have permission to do so. But it's not a mitzvah. I mean, there's a big difference. You understand? Yes. Over, ner Hanukkah is a mitzvah. Not only you have permission to do so, you have a permission and it's a mitzvah. Here, you have permission, but it's not a mitzvah. But, but, Nobody ever told you it's a mitzvah. But it's, <coughs> it's not because it, it's a mitzvah that you can do anything, uh, anything you want. People say, oh, it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah, and they, they're going to do, uh, they're going to bother other people sometimes. Yeah, but at the end of the day, what's a mitzvah? It's a mitzvah, you're allowed to. If, even if they get damaged, you're patu. I mean, I guess within certain limits. Well, obviously. You couldn't put a whole lion out there. Right? No, 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 no. Well, there's no mitzvah on a lion. Well, maybe. Right, we're talking it. about, again, we're talking about you're doing a mitzvah. Even if you think you make mitzvah. 100%. Even you. Yeah, yeah. It's a mitzvah. It's our, our, our direct Torah on Shabbat. Fine. Says the Gimara. Yeah? He says like this. The Tanya was known to the right of you. Know, you're going to be patur. Because it's a mitzvah. So Tashima, we're going to try to come and bring another proof. Right? So therefore, you come and you say that Rabbi Yudah comes and he says you're going to be patur. So you see, Mefurash and the Brayta that Rabbi Yudah was poter anything which is done with a shoot, not only for a mitzvah, anything which was done that you have permission to do so, you're going to be patur, even if it wasn't a mitzvah. Here, there's no mitzvah, and you have permission to do so. So says the Gemara, Rabbi Nachman Matzrit in Shelo B'Shat Otzat Zvalim, Rabbi Yudah. You're right. Our Mishnah is talking about when you took out the the fertilizer, not the time when you're supposed to take it out, and it's in Shittat Rabbi Yehuda. And therefore, since it's Shittat Rabbi Yehuda, since there, <laughs> right, he says over here, Rabbi Yehuda only said your patur if you have permission. And the winter, here you don't winter. have, exactly, and here you don't have permission to do so. 
another end. So Ravashi, Amar Ravashi comes and he says, Lamed Amubet, by 30b. He comes and he says like this, he says, Tivno Mekashotnan, Mishum, the Mishrake. What does that mean? He comes and he says like this, he says, Our Mishnah is talking about a case where it was, it was Huzak by him, right? He comes and he says, why? He says, because people slip on it. And therefore these things, right, straw, since people slip on it, it's normal the what? That you have to be very, very careful. Why? Because uh, it's like you're putting something that's slippery in the For sure you're going to be chaya. Okay? Huh? So when you're not chaya, if it's, um, it's usual for people to slip on it. It's like a banana peel. No, when Rabbi Yehuda said it's going to be mutar, it's only in zebri, right? But he says, right, because, but he says, right, well, since the Tevin and Kash become fertilizer, it's not easy to slip. And therefore, Rabbi Yehuda comes and he says, you're allowed to take it out, and you're going to be patun and because it's not easy to slip. But if it is easy to slip, you're mamash, you're putting it, uh, you know, you're, put, you're setting yourself up. Okay? If you have a property, you always change it. Anybody that's going to grab any of these things that you put in the Rishut Rabim, you're going to be, they're going to be Zuche. Amar Rav, Rav says, Ben Migufam, Ben Meshivchan, doesn't matter whether it's actual Tevin or Kash, or anything which is going to be Mashpiach, which is going to appreciate, right, from it. Uziri Amar Beshivchan, only when it's appreciating, but not Bigufam, not the actual Tevin and Kash, because the Tevin and Kash itself, you cannot take. So, Bemai Kamip, again, what is the Machlog between them? Rav Sava Rav holds that it's Kansu Gufan Mishum Shvachan, that there's a Knas on the bodies of it because of the Shevach, because of the appreciation, right? Uzi'idi Sava lo Kansu Gufan Mishum Shvachan. According to Zidi, they did not make a Knas Gufan Mishum Shvachan. Okay? Tsanan. So we have a Mishnah. Haufech at the Galab Yashut Rabim. If you come in the Yashut Rabim and you start turning over this fertilizer, if somebody gets damaged, you're going to be his goal. There we didn't learn the words, Kulukudan Men Zacha. That if you're going to come, whoever's going to grab it, there's going to be Zoche. So, Tana le Reisha vuadin le Seifa. So, says the Mishnah, we learned the Reisha, which is vuadin is the Seifa, is going to be the same Malacha. The Tani Allah, Surin Mishum Gezin. So, we already learned it's a Sur because of Gezin. Yeah, it's a Sur because of Gezin. So, says the Gimara, Ki Katani a Surin Mishum Gezin. When do we learn it's going to be a Surin Mishum Gezin? Akula Matnit in Kai, on the entire Mishnah. The Oto. Right, she kadam vezacha on the entire Mishnah. So the guy that comes and he actually took it. So therefore, usually there's an isur with gezel. You're not allowed to steal. steal. You're not allowed to steal tevin kash or anything or galal or anything, right, from doing it. So says the Gemara, the halok tani achi. But we didn't learn that way. He says the tanya was learned on a brayta. Hamotzi tivno vekasho the rishut arbim nizvalim. If a person is going to take out tevin and kash to the rishut arbim, who uzak by an acher and somebody gets damaged, chayav benisko lechol akol amen zacha. It's going to be mutar because of gezel, which means if somebody steals it, there's no problem. So therefore, this brayta is actually making a, a, a distinction between tevin and kash that there's no isur of gezel and galal, which is like they're fertilizer. That there is a gezel, meaning you, <coughs> there's no isur if you're going to come and take the tevin, but there is going to be an isur of taking here this uh, kash. So Amar of Nachman. But it's of the galal, sorry, of the, the fertilizer, right? The, the I'm a little confused. The excrement. The last two minutes, you guys. So says the Gemara, Amar of Nachman, but it's hak, says of Nachman, but it's hak. In order to answer this up, he comes and he says, because remember, Rav was the one that says that Ben Bigufam Ben Mishibchan, right? You're allowed to take the actual yeah. Tevin and Kash or whatever appreciates from it. So therefore, that's why it's a question against Rav, was Rav was the one that says that you're allowed to actually take the Tevin and the Kash. Here it's Mashman, you cannot. So he says there's a difference between Galal Karmit, Tavar Sheish Moshevach, so Kansu Gufo Mishum Shivcho, Tavar Sheish Moshevach Lo Kansu, which means like this. When Rav comes and he says in the case of the Galal, it's not a question. Why? Moder Rav, in the case of the Galal, you cannot be Zoche in the Guf, <coughs> an actual Guf of Takala. The reason why is because anything that has an appreciation value, they made a Knas on the Guf because of the Shevach. But anything which does not have an appreciation, so for they did not make such a knas. Okay? So says the Gimana Ibai Lahu. So they're going to ask the following question now. According to the Mandamar that says, Kansu Gufam Mishum Shubachan, which is Rav, Leal Tarakan and Sina, do we make a knas immediately? Or, right, when they actually bring the Shebach, that's when they make a knas. So Tash Shema, we're going to mean, is it an immediate penalty? Or only afterwards, once it starts appreciating, now you could start making the knas. So Tash Shema, we mean in Galal, since we spoke about the, the, the fertilizer, by right, the dung. The Tisvira, and is it logical? 
Karina and Galan, Mikamed Lishne, we're talking about before the answer of Rav Nachman, right? Levatar de Shanim Nachman, but after the answer of Rav Nachman, Mikal Mima Galal Kala, he says, What can you ask? Michal on Galal, it's completely different. Right? What does that mean? He comes and he says, We wanted to ask from Galal because we thought there was something that does not appreciate at all. And really, by man, we do see that it does appreciate. Okay, so says the Gemara, that's fine. One and just it's Machloket. Imagine right now you have a document that has Rebit on it. We give it a knas, right? The what? You're not allowed to collect, not the principal or the Rebit. Wow. Okay, that those are the words of Rebit mean. Chachamim say, no, no, you can take the principal, but not the Rebit. So why don't we just say that Rav holds like Rebit mean, right? That once we give you a knas, you cannot even take the principal. And uh, and uh, Zidi holds like Rabbanan. So says the Gemara, Amar Lecha Rav, Rav is going to tell you, you know, I could tell you even according to the Rabbanan. Why? I could not come to the Rabbanan Hatam. What are we dealing with over there? Only by Keren of the Alva, the, the principal, because the principal was Mutar. But here, Keren Gufa Bukamazi, the actual Keren, the actual straw. straw, it damages. And Zidi is going to tell you, I could tell you even according to Rabbi Mir. Why? I could not come to Rabbi Mir Hatam. When did Rabbi Mir say that you could not take the Keren, the principal? Because he didn't did it at the time of the writing of it. They made a shuma, they made an evaluation of the Rabbit and the Alva, and therefore he was over on the Isur of Lot Simun Lab Neshech. Aval Hacha, but over here, Niemar de Mazik, told you that it's going to damage. Which means this when you came and you wrote the document, did you do an Avera? Yes, yes, because already at the time of the writing of the document, it already had the repeat, the interest written in the document. So you did an Avera at the same time. When you put the fertilizer outside, did you do an Avera? No. Whoever told you it's going to damage? You're right. If it damages, so you're going to be Chayav. But whoever told you you did it, it's going to damage. So therefore, says Zidi, I could even go like Rabbi Mim. And Rav says, I could even go according to Rabbanan. So fine. So says the Gemara, Lima Kandit tonight. There's another group of Tanaim. Right? Amotzit Ivno Kashno, the Rishut Rabbim is Valim. If you're going to take out the straw to the Rishut Rabbim, by process straw, right? To the Rishut Rabbim Lezevet. By Vuzak by Anachir, somebody gets damaged, you're going to be Chayav and Iskov. If you're going to take it, you're going to be Zoche. But it's a sumu shum gezer. Rashbag Omer Rabbi Shabbat says, "Kol kol mishudar b'mizikoh chavid l'shem you're obligated to pay the chol kol emen zachar if you're going to be getting you're going to be zoche umutarim shum gezer you're going to be mutar shum gezer." So says the Gemara. Guf Kashi. Then in itself is a question. Amarta, you just told me kol kol emen zachar vehada kamar. Then you said asur mishum gezer. Ela la avachi kamar. So do what we say. Kol kol emen zachar b'shivchan. Right in the shevach of the, the actual appreciation of the straw. And when it says you're not allowed to actually take it, it's talking about the gufan, the actual, the actual uh, thing in itself. The raw straw. The raw straw. For, but the group <coughs> know, right? Exactly. That's the gufan and that's the shvachan. The atar rashbag, the meman rashbag comes and he says, afilu gufan, even the, you call it the raw, the raw straw, afilu gufan, even the body of it. Okay, the, the raw straw, also, you're going to be zoche also as well. Okay? So, so now the gufan is going to continue to like this. Lizidi, according to Zidi, but Dai Tanahi, for sure it's going to be a Machloka Tanaim. Because Zidi comes and he says that you have to say that it has to be with Shitat Chachamim, not only with Shitat Rashbag. Because you say that Shitat Rashbag was only a Knas on also the raw material, right? So he says, but according to Rav, Mile Matanaim, you're going to tell me it's a Machloka Tanaim. So Rav is going to tell you, the Chuli Alma Kansu Gufam Shuvah. According to everybody, you, they made a Knas on the raw material because of the appreciation. But here the question is, Alacha Vemurim Ken Kamipage. Is it halacha, but we don't pass it, meaning we're not going to teach it. That's a machlok between them, which means like this. Mi'ikar adin, everybody holds like what he said, that we make a knas. Also the raw material, because of the appreciation as well. Mm-hmm. So when the rabbi said, Asurim Shum Gezel, the kavana was, is the rabbi said, Kol Kol Man Zecha, on everything. However, though, that's only with the If somebody grabbed it, and post fact, and they already grabbed it, so they can keep it. So if someone was asking for a sack, you would tell them. That. Exactly, you wouldn't, exactly. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, it's halacha vehem morim ken. I mean, that's halacha. You're right. You take it, it's yours. But I'm never going to pass it like that. Meaning, I'm not going to go in the Petakras and start saying, by the way, you could take whatever you want from the. No, no, no. That's em morim ken. We don't, we don't show that. Level. So it's only a case of diavad. I mean, with diavad, post factor, if somebody came and they did it, it's going to be okay. Itmar Ravuna Mar, Ravuna says, in the name of Rav, it's going to be halacha vehem morim ken. We don't pass it like that. But the Baraba says, halacha morim ken. Right? And it's halacha, and we actually do pass it like that. So says the Gemara, any is it so far? Rav Huna Afker Chushi says he was mafkir seorim barley, which was uh, um, peeled, okay, in the Rishut Rabim, in order to dry. And he says anybody that takes it is going to be zocher. 
Ravada Barav Avki, right? Slikusta. Slikusta, he says here, from the top, 31A. Date it's residue. a date residue. Uh, res, uh, we're talking about like the refuse, right? That's how they say it, refuse? Yeah, here it says residue, but it's okay, probably residue. the same. Yeah, the same thing. Right? Solid is always usually refuse, like bad stuff. So Bishma Ravada Barav Kishmate Ravada Barav goes according to his reason. That basically that you're allowed to make a mafkir and that's it. And then they could take whatever they want. But according to Ravuna Ali Mahadab, what he retracted, answers the Gemara, ah, now Mutarin He says, no, those Seorim and Shutar Bin were actually already warned beforehand a few times not to do so. So therefore, Ravuna was Mahmid, and therefore he went and he says, it's Hefka. Ravuna was Mahmid, because since he already warned them a few times, don't do it. And they were still doing it. He went and he told them, anybody can take it, do whatever you want with it. I mean, even though you don't pass them like that, here they did pass like that, and you're allowed to actually come and take. Everything that you want. Okay. Wonderful day.